haven't thought about every woman in the world that, you know, we're lucky. US, Western countries, we can discuss these topics. We can read about these topics. Think about other countries, Middle Eastern countries, uh, Asian, some Asian countries. They have really difficult restrictions when it comes to these topics. So um, so my, my goal, our goal was to kind of like not have any borders and convert clear information that has been well researched into digestible uh, pieces of content. So there is no point if we put on like jargon, scientific jargon in there. Um, if you want to be technical, of course you can take that route yourself, but we wanted to convert that technicality into uh, simple terms so that everyone can take actions. Welcome to the Menopause Mastery Podcast, a show for women just like you who are ready for more health, vitality, passion, living life with a purpose. I created this show because I knew that women just like me in this second season of life, the season of menopause, are really tapping into their deepest desires. And we're ready to harness our physical and mental health and explore what our true passions are and peel back the layers to uncover exactly what we want out of life. I'm your host, Betty Murray, part geek, part magician, and your new medical bestie with a dash of sass. I love taking the complex science and making it easier to integrate into daily life. So let's join the journey to make this season the best ever. Welcome back to Menopause Mastery. Today, I have Anna Gonzalez Herrera on my show. And Anna is a really, really amazing woman, and you're going to love this show. So Anna has spent 15 years of her life in the corporate world, leading and growing well-known personal care, beauty, and wellness corporations worldwide. So she was immersed in the wellness and, and cosmetics and body care products. All of this was while she was silently battling stage four endometriosis, which caused remarkable disruptions to both her professional and personal life. And after five surgeries, okay, five surgeries for this and severe side effects of several hormone treatments, she started her entrepreneurial journey. And her goal was really to fulfill her vision of rethinking women's health and wellness and knowing from her personal experience that wellness starts from knowledge, she took charge of building and launching a website called Hormone University, which was the first educational platform dedicated to hormone health and aiming not only to raise awareness, but to also empower women to take control of their hormonal health and to be prepared when they stepped into a doctor's office and to have the knowledge to ask the right questions so they could get the right answers. And then she was also inspired by the idea that hormonal wellness is required to have a balanced approach to health and especially the naturopathic, the integrative and functional ideas of natural wellness. Um, she took all of her knowledge from the beauty world and launched Glow Botanica, which is a company that provides a series of effective natural remedies for hormonal balance by targeting the symptoms. So not necessarily targeting an age group, but let's face it, we could have hormonal symptoms at 18, 25, 35, 45, 65. And so she has products that address things like PMS, endometriosis, perimenopause, menopausal symptoms, you name it, and they are clean. So we have a deep dive today. We're going to talk about what it means to have an endocrine disruptor product and what does it mean to have those things removed from the product and what do you need to look for. So all of us fall for the uh, subterfuge and marketing with products out there, stuff that you can buy in organic grocery stores and online that may say natural and other things. And what do you need to know about that and how, how you need to understand what is really happening in this industry and how you may be thinking you're getting a clean product not. And then we go deep into a little bit on the science of how those things can be um, researched and what they're doing to contribute to the quality of the products in this arena. So you want to listen to this episode, even if you think your symptoms are gone and you don't have them, but you probably have women in your life that do have them, or maybe you're like many of us and we want to optimize our health and we want to understand the best way to do that. So join me today while I talk to, to Anna on Menopause Mastery. Hi, Anna. So I am excited to talk to you today because for my listeners, we're going to go back. We're going to be talking about some stuff, particularly that I think you find important because I had two episodes on it, but we're going to talk about endocrine disruption and so many other things. But Anna, I want you to share your story 
because I, I hate to say it, but it's all too real of a story for a lot of women. Yes. Well, first of all, Betty, thank you so much for having me. It's it's really an honor and a pleasure. And uh, I hope I can really bring value to to your guests and your audience. Uh, and yes, so I my story, let me start there. I was in in the corporate world, I was working for many years in the personal care and beauty industry. So I was leading global sales and marketing for several very, very well-known brands, uh, multi-million dollar brands. And I was traveling around the world because I was in charge of international expansion. And so throughout all that time where we just, you know, really dedicate ourselves to, to work, I had extremely painful periods. And uh, at the age, so I'm going to go back in time a little bit, but because I was really fortunate that already in my mid twenties, I was diagnosed with endometriosis. And and why am I saying fortunate? Endometriosis is a, an ex excruciatingly painful condition. It affects 10 to 15% of women. We're talking about around 200 million women uh, around the world that suffer from endometriosis. And it takes an average of seven years to get diagnosed. So I had one of those like old school doctors uh, that that really stays with you, right? And they explain everything to you and they take their time. And of course, the waiting room is full of women frustrated because they can't, you know, they have to wait. But I really, really loved how he explained everything to me. And I had no idea what that was, right? What is endometriosis? What does that mean? And, you know, he did say, this is going to be a very rough ride. Um, let's try and see how we can minimize the, the pain and, uh, and how we can help. So that was kind of mid twenties. And, and then I had other things going on. I had fibroids, I had adenomyosis for a while. I also had PCOS. So my, my years dealing with all of these were absolutely awful. I had to go through in total, um, well, more than five surgeries, uh, endo related five surgeries. And the last surgery, it was the pain was so awful. I, I started questioning why I should live, you know, and I get a little bit emotional because I every time I go back to this memory, I'm like, my God, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't function. And you know how we are as women, or at least, you know, I come from a traditional family, Southern Spanish, you know, I come from the South of Spain. And, they taught us to kind of like just go along with life and with a smile and everything is okay uh, and that's wrong and that's what I often say was my biggest mistake it, it was not to say anything and to keep quiet um and before that fifth surgery it was actually my fourth one I was a partner at this company and uh, I was working along three other guys. And I just, you know, I felt really embarrassed, you know, every time, like I'm bending down with pain. And once I remember I fainted on the floor, you know, I was at Starbucks and picking up my coffee and fainted and picked myself up and took, you know, painkillers and went to work. So um, it's just something that I wish they would say to us from an, a very very early age, you don't need to hide or mask anything. So that's what I did. But going back to that fifth surgery where I was, you know, really questioning my life, that culminated into a, a full-on hysterectomy and a colon resection. So that tell that takes me to surgical menopause, which is something that people don't talk about much. And many women go through surgical menopause. So that's something that is, of course, extreme when it comes to your body from one day to the next, um, having that huge stop when it takes around, what, seven to 10 years um, to go through perimenopause and then menopause. So yeah, it was uh, a very, very tough path. Uh, of course, infertility, I, I did try to have a family that wasn't possible. And you have to deal not just with the physical side of things, but also psychological side of things. And so that took me to that surgical menopause phase. And that, again, led me, my curious mind, uh, innately curious mind, I was kind of like, how do I not know anything about this? Zero, no clue, no clue about menopause, uh, surgical menopause. So that um, really created a huge curiosity to learn more about 
hormonal health. And um, that also uh, really pushed me to see how I could help other women. And I'm a big, big believer that we we should be a sisterhood and we should really help each other and not compete with each other. And so that was the genesis of my two companies, now one company. So it's Hormone University and Glow products. Oh my gosh. You know, I think you touched on so many really important parts. And I think probably the first one mm-hmm. is the fact we don't even talk about having a period as a little girl and as adults. Right. I mean, it's 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 like it's got this sort of shame sort of <laughs> encompassing sort of bubble over the top of it. Because I just remember even having my period for the first time, I was kind of shocked by it because I really didn't know what it was. And when I told my mom what had happened, I'm like, oh, my God, you know, this is happening. I'm bleeding, whatever. And it was like immediately like, don't talk about it. Don't acknowledge it. Keep it quiet. You know, keep all of that quiet. So we go into this process that's fully natural and actually beautiful. And it's actually what allows us to procreate and have humans on the planet. And then we're supposed to have shame around the fact that we have this once a month. But heaven forbid you have something that how it gives you pain so bad you faint. I think most men have no idea what that is. Sorry, guys, if you're listening, but you probably have not been in pain so bad that you fainted, you know, unless somebody hits you. <laughs> right, right. And and I grew up with three older brothers, right? So what I want to tell the men listening to this is that you guys are so important. You have no idea. You really are. You're there to support us. You're there to listen. You're there not to make us feel embarrassed. And you have an amazing role for us. So again, it's like, let's, let's all support each other for future generations and not make this some sort of taboo subject because it's part of nature. That's, you know, it's as simple as that. I love the kind of simplicity of it. At the same time, it's what happens every day, everywhere in the world. Exactly. And I think, you know, like you said, endometriosis, because we have all the shame and all this other stuff and sort of this hidden picture about it, so many women, like you said, what, 200 million women assumed around the planet to have it, which means probably one one little smidgen of that gets diagnosed, just deal with the pain, the discomfort, the... Um, the fertility issues and all those other things. And, and in many cases don't have an answer because nobody really goes to look at it. Could you talk a little bit about, you know, how you got diagnosed? Cause I think a lot of people don't really understand. Mm -hmm. And obviously I can go into some of the technical aspects of it, but you know, what was your process to get diagnosed? Because it's not easy to diagnose. It's kind of a elimination sort of thing. Right, exactly. And it, that's one of the biggest issues that we are seeing also women writing to us um, at Harvard University and, and they kind of, you know, they're desperate. They're absolutely desperate because they're, they're screaming and, and they are in pain and they don't get a diagnosis and they're being told, look, this, this is normal. Actually, no, it's not normal. So, um, you know, when I said I was fortunate is because it was just an ultrasound and he picked it up immediately. I was, you know, I didn't know it was difficult to diagnose. I had no idea, but he just did the ultrasound and said, hey, I'm so sorry. I see tissue that um, has got endometriosis and this is, you know, you might have an infiltration in the ovaries and this is what's, this is what's provoking this horrible pain every month and the heavy periods. So he had no hesitation. He saw it very clearly. He clear, he had a trained eye. So this is another aspect is how are they getting trained and do they get trained enough to be able to identify this issue or other issues right um so so yeah that 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 really was there was nothing else to it yeah it's um because it's not always easy like you said trained eye is i think it's important because it's not super easy to t- detect even with you know a, a sonograph or anything like that you have to you have to look a little a little closer, you know, and I think, um, you know, for anybody that's listening, just in case they don't understand what's really happening is the endometrial tissue is the tissue inside the uterus that with the hormones stimulate bringing in blood and other supply to kind of prepare for fetal implantation, like to, to grow a baby. And what has happened is that tissue has migrated out of the uterus and it attaches itself to the bowel the inner organs, the ovaries, the fallopian tubes, wherever there's tissue. So all that tissue outside of there is getting stimulated as well. And it's activating pain sensors on the bowel and everywhere else. And so you got pain, but it can also strangle those or- those organs as well. It can strangle the ovaries and 
So it's, it's, it's a serious issue, but it's not very easily diagnosed. And I hear a lot of times women have gone through, you know, laparoscopic, just investigative surgery to go look for it because it's so hard to see, right? And then at that point, you know, whether they can clean it up or not. So you probably went through multiple surgeries where they were trying to sort of take away the tissue, I would assume. Yeah, that's right. I, I, you know, nobody knows, uh, nobody has a cure for endometriosis. I do correlate um, every time I had a very strong event of pain uh, for a long period of time, there was usually stress involved in my life, uh, very painful, stressful events. And so um, I do believe that, you know, it was kind of, let's say I had the surgery, you know, I was finally feeling okay again. And then I remember um, at one point, I think it was my second surgery, uh, six months later, or a year later, um, my dad passed away. And, and, and so and then very slowly, the pain started coming back. Uh, and again, it was unbearable. And again, another surgery. So I look, I guess when Stress is poison, we all know that. And um, the chemical tsunami that goes on with high cortisol levels is just horrendous for our immune system. So there must be something there. Um, nobody has the right answer. Yeah, there's definitely, there's all these hormones play together. And so I, I look at it and from my research, you know, stress is the primary hormone. You know, it is it is our survival hormone and we live our lives as if we're starving and running for our life every day on the Serengeti and all those sex hormones and the, the balance of those hormones fluctuating the way they're supposed to are driven by whether we're safe or not. And, you know, a lot of times even in endometriosis, one of the diet, one of the treatments is to use very high dose progesterone like Megase or Lupron to try and shut down the ovarian production of estrogen. And it's because there's a relationship between progesterone and cortisol, right? Not, not that that's the only reason why they may be off, but that often is. And it's so frustrating that we just haven't got the, A, the technology, the understanding and the depth to really dig in and understand a better way to treat because a lot of those treatments are really unpleasant also. That's right, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. So, um, so really, Betty, um, I'm, I'm so glad that you are talking about this and bringing this awareness out in the world because there are still so many women that are not being heard, and and that's our common goal in a way, right? We 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 want to make sure that um, we contribute at least a little bit to that. So, um, so those years, those struggles, the pain um, became my mission, really, in life. Uh, one day I just decided, um, one part I haven't mentioned is that I had, um, uh, as treatment for surgical menopause, I was given HRT. And uh, just to put the cherry on the cake, I had major, major, a major side effect with a black clot. So that was kind of like, oh God, give me a break. Seriously, <laughs> like give me a break. So, um, so that led me to stop. I had to stop the treatment. And finally, that was the reason why I decided to look for natural ingredients, look for something in the market that could help me with the, the really, it was a, an insane, crazy, uh, well, time of my life, you know, because you're on surgical menopause, you've got the night sweats in extreme, you've got like, I was crying every five minutes. And so you don't feel like it's you anymore. You're like a different person. Um, and I started looking into ingredients and that was, again, the genesis of our products. Uh, so it's been a lab labor of love for now almost three years. And um, that's a, a whole other story that, you know, I can tell you briefly, but, um, but yeah, that was what uh, really I thought, okay, I need to create something that will really help me and all these other women that cannot take or do not want to take uh, hormonal treatments. So that was the, um, uh, the start of GLOW, GLOW Botanica. Um, we are hero product, uh, is a topical cream. So it's a different approach. It's not a, an oral supplement. Uh, we were so lucky to have one of the really top OBGYNs in the country, Dr. Elizabeth Poyner. She's got a very holistic 
way of, of treating women. And someone very, very well known that I happened to meet um, said to me, you, you've got to go to, she has to review your formulations and she has to be part of this. And I went to see her and she was like, wow, this is incredible. I love this approach. This will not mess with your gut because it's transdermal. And uh, there are, of course, as you, as you know, Betty, uh, a huge influence between gut and hormones. So yeah, so we created that. We did four studies and uh, we did this study with women going through PMS, menopause, perimenopause, and PCOS and endometriosis. And so the results were absolutely outstanding. And can I just say, this is the anecdote that really made a massive difference and it was great. So as I was trying the formulations, we did more than 20 until we got to the right one. And um, started feeling like, wow, I, I, my libido was like incredible. So I'm like, okay, what is going on here? What is going on here? So effectively, it really, really helps with sexual appetite. Um, and that's, so many women are thanking us, <laughs> giving us wonderful testimonials. So that's, that's wonderful. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, um, you know, not only do we have the hot flashes, the brain fog, the night sweats, yeah. the, you know, hair falling out, dry skin, dry everything. But the fact that your libido takes a nosedive, you know, I, I think I think of that as we should have appetites, appetites for beauty, appetite for food, appetite for wonderful things. And we should have an appetite for sex because oh, that's for sure. required for an intimate relationship, truly, in most cases. I mean, can people find ways around that? But let's face it, that's an enriching part of our intimate relationships. And I think, you know, when you get a woman behind closed door, that is always part of the conversation. They may talk about the things that are more comfortable outside, but it is this loss of sexual appetite, desire, experience, right? The ability to experience it fully and then, you know, what it does to a relationship. And so I think that's so important that your products not only are effective, but actually help with something so basic and so necessary. So let's talk a little bit about what are some of the things you found? Because you came from the beauty industry, right? You were, you were an insider. So what are some of the things that you found when you were looking at products that people may not recognize that you want to avoid, particularly because we do have hormones. Right, exactly. And look, um, it, it's something that I, I always say, I don't like recommending because everyone has their own view and, and they know, or they, at least I hope, they, they understand what's best for them, right? Uh, but the one thing is that you need to bear in mind that unfortunately, and this is the topic that we were discussing earlier, like endocrine disruptors, huge issue. 99% of Americans are affected by endocrine disruptors. Everyone, right? Practically. Uh, you need to look at the fact that there is a hormonal health crisis. Um, one in four couples are suffering from infertility. 10% of the population PCOS almost 15% endometriosis, 80% of women go through hormonal imbalance. I mean, I could go on and on and on with, with really terrible statistics that are, I mean, let's not even talk about sperm count and sperm quality and the crisis that we've got in terms of natural reproduction. So um, the first deck that I did, the first presentation that I put together was called an endocrine disruptor free brand for women. <laughs> there was no name, right? And, um, I, you know, I became kind of obsessed with this topic because uh, as I was working in the beauty industry and I started looking into phthalates and I started looking into parabens and uh, plastics and uh, it was such an important topic that um, I believe now we're starting starting to discuss this but everyone needs to be aware that the, the products out there that talk about being natural and clean that is not sufficient that is a very vague um, marketing 
strategy uh, or messaging. And so it was very important to me that we would not disrupt your hormonal health, but we would help your hormonal health in a natural way and without hormones. So it was a big challenge. And um, as I surrounded myself with brilliant pe people, because I'm not a doctor, um, and like I said, Dr. Elisa Poynor, she's got a PhD in cell genetics, summa cum laude at Princeton. I mean, she is incredible. Um, we we looked at ingredients that could really help um, stimulate our hormonal imbalances. And yet it would be a clean, clean, clean formula. No toxics, no preservatives. And so that was kind of like the premise of the brand. And it's worked really, really well. But I think the message here is what we do on a daily basis is what really gets accumulated in our bodies. So it's not the, the oh, I'm going to do a detox for a week. That's great. But think about what you do on a daily basis. And that's really important. Yeah, I th think I remember, you know, and this is an old stat, you know, it's probably at least 10 years old that the average woman puts on like 134 different chemicals just getting ready in the morning. And it's probably closer to 180 and they don't even realize it. And they think, right. oh, you know, it's I've got this little tube of whatever. I'm just putting a little bit, let's say, as an under eye concealer or I'm putting a little bit as a lipstick or whatever, but they don't realize it has this additive effect and that in many cases it's staying in our body long term. And so it is that overall just, you know, kind of watershed amount that we're getting all the time. And then you add the environmental things that we're exposed to and it's just too much, way, way too much. Now, exactly. obviously, obviously um, you're from Spain. I think we could also look at the fact that United States allows so much more of these toxic chemicals into our food and products and other things that Europe doesn't do, you know, Europe doesn't do. So, so talk about that. Yes. Um, over 1400 chemicals are allowed in the U S um, and that, you know, it makes me really sad. I have to say, because yes, the EU has got the gold standard. Um, having launched brands in so many different countries, uh, that's what they look at. So when you're doing import in other markets, that's what they say. They say, we want to see that you've got the EU pass, you know, and effectively, um, we when we looked into endocrine disruptors, and uh, I actually talked to several experts in this field. One of them is an incredible professor at NYU. He wrote a book, he's a pediatrician, wrote a book about endocrine disruptors. And um, he contributed to several very important studies in the EU about this. Uh, I sat down with him and effectively it's something that hopefully will come, but this is really the mission that we have. Uh, we've actually launched a certification about uh, endocrine disruptor free products. And we would love for every brand out there to apply to that certification <laughs> and really show that they are natural and really show that they're clean. And, uh, you know, it's a very, very, very thorough process. So, yes, um, to, to go back to your question, the, the, the EU has that um, there is a, an agency just dedicated to that. It's called the European Agency of Chemicals. Uh, they're having uh, a meeting this month, April, about PFAS. So PFAS is a chemical that, for those who don't know, uh, is a forever chemical, and it has been found in one specific brand uh, in menstrual care. So you can just imagine you are buying this for your daughter or for yourself, and you're wearing this piece of clothing that has a forever chemical, which means it will get into your body, it will mimic your hormones, and it will mess up your hormone health. So that's just one chemical, one. There are so many other chemicals that affect hormone health. For men, phthalates, really terrible chemical for men, uh, sperm count, sperm quality. So um, it's a very broad subject, very deep subject. I like to be optimistic and I would say to your audience, there are so many things we can do to avoid or minimize, right? It is very hard, but we can minimize um, these chemicals in our lives. And 
I would just encourage people to come to our university and read our articles. And we've got tips, practical tips. I'm all about practical stuff. You know, it's what we do. What do we do? Um, so yeah, there are many things we can do. And um, it's important that we're just aware of this and do something about it. Absolutely. You know, I think um, I want to step back a little bit because um, I, I wrote a book on kind of toxins and detoxification back in 2009 and then reissued it in 2013. Now, too far into Love the PhD it. to redo that for a while. So I'm not going to be writing anything for a while, people. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of subterfuge in marketing terminology, natural, clean, you know, it's definitely in the food world. I talk a lot about it in the food world, but they're, they're just, there's all these amorphous, you know, words that are being thrown around that people just don't get that are meaningless. They have no, they have no chops around them. They have no def definition that defines whether it is or isn't, you know, so, so can you speak just a little more about that? What are the words that they need to watch that, that they need to know? Hey, that probably means nothing. Oh gosh, that's a tough one, Betty. <laughs> <laughs> or should I tell them you need to go to Hormone University because yes, we have all please. that there. So please read Hormone University, but there's a several like natural, clean, fresh. <laughs> yes. And think about detergents. I always like to mention that. Um, detergents and cosmetics. So fragrance, that's a vague word. You know, what does that mean? What's in that fragrance? Um, and so I'm I'm yeah, I mean detergents are when I see things like, oh, this is a baby, um, baby product to, to wash your product, right? To, sorry, to wash clothing. And when I look at the chemical makeup of that, I'm like, oh my God, this is, how is this not forbidden, right? So um, I would say uh, clean, natural. Mm, yes. Okay. BPA free. That's another subject that could be BPA free. There are di different types of BPAs, right? So um, and then you have the recycled signs. And I believe, again, we've got this in one article. There are, there are a couple of numbers that are okay. So depending on the number that you see, um, but there are others that are not okay. So you should definitely watch out when you are, let's say, drinking a cup of coffee and the lid is plastic. So what number is there? Uh, watch out for that. Um, and so, gosh, it's just a never ending topic. It's a never ending topic. It's, it's hard. It's really hard. And I don't want to be kind of like alarming people, but um, in a way, it's kind of an alarming subject. So I, I, I just think that we all have to learn more about it. And one thing that is important too, is that whatever we use and whatever chemicals that um, are coming through to our, through our skin, uh, or we inhale or we eat, you know, pesticides, that's a whole other subject too, herbicides, um, that can actually be passed on to other generations. So if you're pregnant, just be careful, you know, those supplements that we take or whatever we use again be very very careful what are you doing at home um and what are you using at home yeah i think i don't think people realize uh, uh, fetal development comes off the portal vein so it's off the liver so basically everything that exits your liver is kind of passing on through that process so like the fastest way this is a really terrible way to say it but if you want to detox be pregnant because it's going to pull everything basically to the fetus so it's, um, you know, which sounds scary. So likewise, I think people just need to be informed. And what I always tell people to do is we're starting with just one thing. So maybe it's the lid on my coffee. I'm not going to do that anymore. Then the next day it's, I'm not going to drink out of plastic water bottles and reheat foods and plastics and things like that. I'm going to slowly, like each time you just remove a layer, I'm going to get educated on the stuff that I put on my body and around my body and cover my face and start cleaning up those products. And we can just start lowering the load. No, we probably can't change what pesticides being sprayed at the golf course three streets over, but we can do what we do within our own environment and just do a little bit at a time and reduce that overall load, you know? And absolutely, absolutely. You know, Betty, I, I was thinking about that yesterday as I was flying. Um, and of course they serve you a hot meal in a plastic recipient. So I'm like, oh God, you know, I'm not going to do this, right? Um, so now I'm so aware of it. I avoid eating on the plane. I, I, If I can, I bring my own food. And if not, then I avoid these hot meals. Or when you go and do your manicure and they give you these plastic, hot plastic gloves. And I'm always like, no, no, thanks. I don't want this. So um, yes, things like that to avoid as much chemical overload as possible is what we can do. And it's 
it's not that hard. It's really not that hard. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's just knowing it and then taking those steps. So, so tell me, so you started Hormone University, right? And obviously that's an educational platform. So what can people find on Hormone University? Yes. So um, I, you know, I, I thought about every woman in the world that, you know, we're lucky. US, Western countries, we can discuss these topics. We can read about these topics. Think about other countries, Middle Eastern countries, uh, Asian, some Asian countries. They have really difficult restrictions when it comes to these topics. So um, so my, my goal, our goal was to kind of like not have any borders and convert clear information that has been well researched into digestive uh, pieces of content. So there is no point if we put on like jargon, scientific jargon in there. Um, if you want to be technical, of course, you can take that route yourself. But we wanted to convert that technicality into uh, simple terms so that everyone can take action. So you can find all sorts of topics about hormonal health. Um, and you can also find a hormonal dictionary. So if you don't know what uh, progesterone is, is there, or estrogen or uh, cortisol, it's all in there. We also have free resources. We have this uh, really cute uh, daily uh, resource that you can download. And it's just uh, to help you with your stress levels and kind of like a journal uh, that you can just print out. We've got uh, breakfast recipes. And what we have that we did with a lot of um, dedication and contribution from our board is also a symptom checker. It's very thorough. And there are now doctors using our symptom checker. So you can go there and check if you've got hormonal imbalance. It's brilliant. It's really, I'm so proud of, of that work. Um, and of course, you've, you can find uh, Glow products in there too. Absolutely. So I was reading one of the articles on your site and it was talking about hormone testing and how and when and those kind of things. So it sounds like you're a proponent for getting tested. Because I think if somebody had done a little deeper dive, they wouldn't have given you the hormone treatment that they did, you know? Yes, exactly. Exactly. Um, I, you know, I think that is very important that people even understand that they have that option. I'm shocked, Betty. I really am shocked that so many women don't even know that they can test their hormones. I mean, it's it's insane. Um, but yeah, that's that's something that I always tell everyone and not just your hormones. You, you can do mineral testing in your hair. You can do so many other different tests that will give you a, a picture of what's happening with you. Microbiome is a huge one too, right? So yeah. Um, all about testing. Love it. Because it's, it's otherwise, how do you how do you diagnose or get a, a proper diagnosis? Sorry, uh, if you don't have the data to to be able to show what's going on with you. Yeah, it's funny. I, I anybody that has listened to my show, there was, it was probably a couple of months back. I came across a, it was a it was an Instagram post. And not everybody's going to go, yes, Betty's getting ready to lose her mind. But it was an older gentleman doctor talking about, we don't need to test women hormone. It, they're all over the place. There's no reason because it's so obvious, the symptoms that you can just start hormone replacement. And I lost my mind because I was like, oh, you're just assuming we all go through the exact same changes and all those things. I lost it because I have so many women that come to our clinic that I see that that my team sees and that I talk to on, you know, menopause mastery or that are, are part of our tribe. And they're not, you know, maybe they aren't the 60, 80% that go through it and only have these kind of symptoms. But the reality is it could kill you if you don't know the answer. A, a, a thrombotic event or a blood clot can kill you. And if they don't know how to treat it properly or, or that you might be at risk, they just hand out medicine. And I'm, I'm a proponent for hormone replacement in the right population. But it's also appropriate to find out what's the right treatment, right? And obviously, sub, you know, subcutaneous, can I talk today? Um, subcutaneous, that's the word I was trying to say. Subcutaneous, you know, absorption is much, much safer than oral. There's so many other things. And then obviously your products, which we're getting ready to talk about, are, are helpful because we can absorb these things in natural botanicals that can alter our hormones in a really safe way. But 
oh my gosh, that makes me mad. So I'm so glad you guys talk about the hormone testing and what people need to know and how to how to ask for it because it's it is it's important. Yes, absolutely. My go- my gosh, it's um it's so crucial that and, and again I congratulate you, Betty, for all the work that you do because uh, for everyone listening, yes, do check your hormones. You need to have a picture and you need to get your doctor to dissect everything that's going on and and then make a decision. Without that picture, it's it's really hard. I don't get it how based on just going through, okay, I'm going through this, I'm going through that, but you need to see what truly goes on chemically in your body. So yeah, I I absolutely love that you just mentioned that. And again, things like I'm, I'm like you too. Like I'm, I'm a proponent of whatever makes uh, the right option uh, for that specific situation. But I didn't know I was going to have a blood clot, right? And it was very, very, very scary. Um, and so same thing goes with the pill, the contraceptive pill. That is, oh my goodness, prescribed as if you're taking some, I don't know, like a, candy. I don't know. Yeah, candy. Exactly. Exactly. You know, girls, 12 years old. Oh, you have a little bit of acne. Here you go. Um, No, no, please just just read, read the pamphlet. That's all you need to do to get scared. (laughs) So um, that information is printed there for a reason uh, in very small print also for a reason. But um, I again, um, you know, if that's something that is going to help you temporarily for something, absolutely, absolutely. Um, but let's let's be cautious. That's that's my message. Absolutely, yeah. So, so let's talk a little bit about your your suite of products because I think my my listeners would want to know. Obviously, they can go to Globe Botanica and Hormone University and find them. But talk a little bit about what what products you've got. And I'm sure you have more in the pipeline because as soon as you start creating things, there's like there's more in the, in the pipeline. But yes, let's talk about them. Thank you, Betty. Yes. So uh, we've just actually merged uh, Glow and Hormone University. So uh, if you go to Shop Wellness, you can be able to see we have three products at the moment and effectively soon to have uh more but um the the main product is uh right now called tummy butter we're changing the name soon but uh tummy butter is the product that i mentioned earlier that has gone through a very rigorous uh process with brilliant experts from pharmacologists, OBGYN, nutritionists, uh, a PhD in food science. Um, and actually, I was lucky to have uh, alumni uh, from the University of Columbia as well. So we created this product, uh, which has three key ing- ingredients. Uh, it has Wildium root, marshmallow root, and Vitex. And it's it's a multi-symptom approach. I see you smiling. <laughs> I like, I thank you. Um, so it, it really helps with so many different symptoms. And I wanted to create a brand that would not target age, but target symptoms. And of course, I know that for a fact that you can go through surgical menopause. Um, I was 39 years old and you can have a heavy period when you're 50. So why are brands, you know, I know this too, right? Having been in the beauty industry, oh, if you're 40, this is what you need to use. Well, no, it's all about what you're going through. And so um, symptoms is our kind of philosophy. And we target bloating, heavy periods, um, cramps, hot flashes, libido. And so what it does and why it works is because Valium root has an extract called diostenin, and diostenin is a precursor of cholesterol, which stimulates our progesterone and estrogen. So it's it's actually uh, something that we discovered that was very interesting is that the first pill contained diostenin, and uh, they synthesize this, of course, in, in the lab. And so it's really interesting. Many people don't know that every pharma out there, every um, pharma product out there comes from nature. So willow bark, that's what's used for aspirin, right? So um, so that's what we use. And uh, the root of, of this um, plant is, is so, so powerful. Uh, and actually for the men out there, this ingredient is also used for men's libido. And so... <laughs> You're welcome to try it if you want. <laughs> I have some male friends that actually love it. Um, and then marshmallow root that really uh, 
helps with uh, bloating um, and Vitex is also a wonderful ingredient that has so many different benefits for both premenstrual syndrome and menopausal symptoms. So yeah, we've had thousands of women really enjoying our product. Um, we launched uh, last year and uh, we've had Oh, the last the last email that I got from this woman was just it really it made me cry. I mean, it, it just it's so hard to launch something from scratch. And when you get these testimonials is what makes it all worth it. So really happy about that. Um, the second product uh, is targeting sleep and stress. And it's a super rich magnesium lotion with uh, collagen. So uh, it's a great mix. It's a wonderful formula. The magnesium comes from the Sea of Holland. It's called Zechstein Magnesium. It's one of the purest in the world. It was very, very hard to source. And we formulate all of our products in Europe. So you can rest assured that uh, it, it, the, the gold standard is there. It's important. As we just covered, that's important. 1,400 right. chemicals, ladies. You don't want American made. <laughs> Yeah, unless oh unless they unless they go through your certification and prove that they actually are clean from endocrine disruption, you don't want an American product. I'm so excited about that. Yay. Yes, yes. And the third product is a great um accessory. Uh, I I I love these heating pads. Uh we made it heating and you can also freeze it if you're going through menopause and you have hot flashes or you have inflammation of some sort in your muscles. It's just two ingredients. It's flaxseed and lavender. And uh, again, it's just a really nice, cozy uh, thermal pad uh, that comes with a little canvas bag as a, as a present. So very cute, very giftable too. Yeah, that's important. Yeah, I would say, you know, ladies, anybody who's listening, if it's you, well, most of, probably a lot of my listeners, this, this ship has sailed and they finally went through it. But, but a lot of women who may be in the middle of it or maybe have a daughter or somebody else that they know, a way to figure out potentially that you might have a problem like endometriosis or endomyosis, uh, all of those, endomyosis, all those, adenomyosis, let me say that correctly, is if you have to put a heating pad on, that's probably a good sign. Because that seems to be universal, like, oh, it hurts so bad that the heating pad for a while feels better. Would you say right. that's true from what you hear, from your own experience and what you hear? Oh, my gosh. I mean... Totally. That was my, my, that's the reason why we created it because to me it was impossible to live without it. So I wanted something that I could just take with me anywhere and, um, and yeah, travel friendly and yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. One of my, one of my best friends went through adenomyosis and endometriosis, multiple surgeries. And she just, that was in her bag at like some sort of, she had one that plugged in, which isn't always super, you know, easy to travel with and things, but it was with her all the time, all the time. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, so anybody that doesn't know that, that's a really important product. <laughs> so awesome. Anna, is there any, is there, are there any little words of wisdom that you want to leave my listeners that, you know, their major take home message today? So many, but um, it's a hard one because um, I think that um, what I mentioned earlier at the beginning of our conversation about staying silent is a, uh, is a very important message that I learned the hard way. And women are, you know, some of them are taking strong leadership positions in the workplace. Menopause is an important subject. So let's talk about it. Um, and it doesn't matter whether you are in the corporate world, not corporate world, if you're working, not working, um, whoever is in your community, just be open because you're going to help other generations too by talking about this so that's I guess my main message and the second message is be aware of what you do on a daily basis with your uh, health and the products that you use every day so those are if you allow me those those are the two messages yes I think that's so important and I you know you and I were talking at the very beginning before we got on the recording that I just feel like women can change this world. Like if there are things and you're a listener and you're like, this isn't going well, we, we can change that as women if we just start opening up and using our voices more. Because let's face it, we, we've had an environment where it has been quashed. Some countries and some environments still and much, much more. 
But I think we can change the conversation around women's health. We can change the conversation around what's going on. We can change the conversation nationally and internationally if we just speak up, you know. And so obviously that's my, my soapbox. I'm going to stand Absolutely. on it and scream on the corner, but, you know, it's the reality of it. So I love what you're doing. And I, and I love that not only did you create products, because you could have easily created products and said, forget it. I'm just here for commerce, right? Let's, let's be real. But you created products. You created an educational platform with Hormone University. And you also created a certification that could become the gold standard for products that want to claim clean products, which I think is, and, and I'm sure that's evolving and other things, but I'm so excited for that because I, I think people need to know when they're buying something that it truly is endocrine disruptor free. I do. I do. So yeah. thank you, Anna. Thank you so much. You just described our three pillars. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it's really hard. It's really hard to manage all three. And effectively, the just Hormone University, the resources that it requires, and it's for free, right? So we're not monetizing that. And it is a major resource um, that you know, it's 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 a lot of work, um, but I do it with all my heart and my team too, and and we were such a committed team, and it's it's really important. So yes, effectively, uh, and that was the start. That Hormone University, um, that was actually the start. So yeah, that's great. That's great. So everybody, you need to go out and look up Hormone University, and then go to the Globe Botanicals and Glow Botanica, and look at the products there. You can get to them from the same place, and look up Anna and and start using her resources and her products. So I want to thank you so much for being on the show. I had a great conversation. We could go on for hours, honestly. I know, right? Yes. <laughs> thank you so much, and thank you so much to everyone who's listening. And um, yeah, uh, I would just love for everyone to continue this conversation. I'm uh, very grateful for everything that you're doing, Betty. Thank you. Thank you. So thank you everyone for listening to Menopause Mastery. If you loved this, this conversation, A, could you give me a review? And even if you don't like it, if you don't like it, give me a review too. And please share it with a friend, share it with the women in your life that need to hear this information, because this is how we educate and how we get our message out and help women really take control of their health. And it's, it really is, those things are really meaningful. So Thank you everyone for listening to Menopause Mastery and I'll see you next week. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Menopause Mastery Podcast. You are why I'm here and I am so very grateful. Hit subscribe so you don't miss any wisdom on creating the most exceptional life on our terms. If this episode has helped you in any way, please share it with a friend to spread the love and together we rise. You can follow me on social media at Betty Murray PhD and you can reach me online at bettymurray.com. 